OnePlus makes some awesome phones, but one of my favorite things is the true customizability of OnePlus devices. Here we have the Pixel Experience Plus, based on Android 12, which is a decent jump for most OnePlus phones out there. But today we have Android 12 Pixel Experience Plus on the OnePlus 5 and OnePlus 5T by Lexi P. Not sure if I pronounced that correctly. And I'm going to show you my setup and talk about what to expect from this ROM. Hello everyone, this is Matt from Real World Review. Socials are listed here, so let's get started. First of all, the install was pretty simple. Ultimately, unlock the bootloader, write TWRP, and then boot into recovery and simply install one package. Sure, you gotta wipe the phone, but that's a pretty simple install for a ROM. You might be asking, but wait, explain what you mean. No, this is not one of those videos to tell you how to install it, because I'm not good at explaining that. I'll try to link guides in the description below, but remember, I can't and won't be your tech support. Not for this video, at least. Either way, pretty simple, but I did find myself having to wipe the data portion to get storage to read properly, but I'm pretty sure it was just a TWRP issue. Also, I probably don't really know exactly what I'm doing. Either way, the phone booted up, setup was really simple, and everything reads as this phone being a Google Pixel 6 Pro. That's a nice touch. I was running the regular version of this and tried upgrading to Plus when it came out, and I just had to wipe the phone. Not sure why, but remember to back up before installing or applying updates, and write the recovery. Don't just boot it. Now I normally skip over the software in a lot of my review videos, or just briefly talk about it, so we'll see how this works. First off, we're going to Android 12 from Android 10. This alone brings a new life into the OnePlus 5, a phone that I reviewed last year, which you should check out, that comes with a processor that isn't even supported to run Android 12. Even the Pixel 2 doesn't support Android 12, and the performance is nice. It's pretty smooth and everything works as you would expect. I'm not seeing any performance drops really anywhere with some impressive benchmarks numbers, though technically those numbers are a little bit lower, but still within a 5% difference. As for the Pixel experience, you do get it, but just like my iPhone layout, my Android layout is pretty basic, lacking modern widgets and with the color coding being very minimal. The launcher is the normal Google one, so no launcher folders or even hidden spaces, but it still works like you would expect on a Pixel phone. We get the Google feed on the left, while for some reason I kind of miss the OnePlus shelf. Swiping down we get quick toggles and I can't believe Google still hasn't made a toggle for Wi-Fi and a toggle for cellular, but this dev has. You know, it's the simple things. Clicking into the settings, it's how you would expect to see on a Pixel phone, with some ROM specifics, as well as a tab for OnePlus settings. There's a lot of normal features you would expect to see, like the always on display and double tap to wake, but wait, let's briefly go over the standard and plus differences. So for the standard, we ultimately get a Pixel ROM without the now playing feature, but we do get the always on display as well as an ambient display. Some OnePlus features like the alert slider and fast charging support, as well as a navigation bar and gestures that come with Pixel devices. And camera dot fix, whatever that is. On the Plus Edition, we get all of that with all of this stuff. The most notable for me on the list is double tap to wake and sleep, battery indicators, face unlock, and some other small things. I actually messaged Lexip about my complaints about the software, and almost all of those were fixed or added, like double tap to wake and sleep, face unlock, better RAM usage, and battery drain. Well, the last one is a little bit of a mixed bag. The face unlock is fast and reliable, so when it comes to authenticating, it feels like the OnePlus stock software. Double tap to wake and sleep is seamless and feels like stock OnePlus as well, but the sleep option is just in the status bar only and not the home screen like I'm used to. Still works fine though. The RAM usage is an odd one because the phone still runs a little bit over 6GB on the 8GB version, which might be a concern if you have a 6GB model. It probably will compress below 6GB, but honestly, I didn't really have RAM issues when using this phone, so I wouldn't really worry too much about that. As for the battery drain, the always-on display is pretty much to blame. Now it did used to be worse, but I'm getting about 10-20% of battery drain just from the always-on display alone. I did switch to the ambient display and got much better battery life, however this battery is still pretty old to begin with. As for the software alone, battery life is pretty much on par with stock OnePlus software, so don't expect a big drop in battery life, but maybe 5-10% to less battery per day depending on your use. While there were some nice things, I did have some issues. Now I just told you about the battery, but that kind of sucks. 
I love having the always on display and it's just disappointing that even with a ROM we can't get it without having some major downsides. Sure, charge the battery more or even change it, but for this video I chose to keep the stock battery to make sure my results weren't skewed. This also reminds me that the Pixel software isn't the best, it's just really smooth. Lots of the features in the Plus Edition are pretty much OnePlus features already, so rather than feeling included, they were pretty much just added in. One thing that I do find annoying is that when you type in the password, it doesn't automatically go. You have to click enter. I was told it was to prevent brute force, which I guess is fine, but adding a toggle to allow me to make that choice would be nice. But the second part of this is RFI, which is room for improvement. This is software, not hardware, so fixes can happen over time, and most of my issues seem fixable. Like I said, just a simple toggle and changing some code to make sure your already less secure phone is even more unsecure. At the end of the day, this ended up being a respectable custom ROM. It brings the Pixel experience to non-Pixel phones and allows them to have more life in them with very little sacrifices. I would say that you can run this as a daily ROM, though there is always the chance of phone-specific bugs. I always love to see how people use old devices to run modern software, something I used to do with my Nexus 6 before I got lazy. But it's the fact that you can bring software into old devices that allows me to not only recommend, but also donate if you can if you do enjoy using this ROM, like I did. But that's the end of my review of the OnePlus 5 and OnePlus 5T Android 12 Pixel Experience Plus ROM. This is probably the most I've ever talked about software, so I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for watching.